All right, I think we're going to go ahead and get started um, to start off. Let that little video play. Um, so I just want to go through a little bit of housekeeping um, before we get started. Go to the next slide. Now. Um, just a quick little bit of housekeeping. Uh, we will provide the slides and the recording of today's presentation for you guys within the next day or so. Um, everybody is muted right now, but if you have questions throughout the presentation or at the end during the Q&A portion, you can just submit those using the Q&A button down at the bottom of your screen. Um, presentation should last about 30 to 45 minutes. And then as I mentioned, we will have uh, Q and A time for Q and A at the end, and you'll also at the end if you want to ask your questions orally, um, you'll be able to unmute yourself at that time and ask your question. So our agenda today is going to be, Amanda, could you go to the next slide? Uh, Amanda's going to give a quick introduction. She's going to go through the worst case scenario with surveying. Uh, a little bit on who professional surveyors are, the benefits of hiring a professional surveyor, five types of land surveying, how to build a professional survey in the process of that, the risks of not hiring a professional surveyor, and then we'll have that Q&A section at the end. So with that, I will let Amanda take it away. Amanda, you're muted. Thank you, Nicole. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Amanda Allred, and I'm a licensed professional land surveyor in six Western states, including Alaska, Arizona, Colorado, New Mexico, Nevada, and Utah. I have worked in the land surveying industry for the past 25 years. I have a degree in geomatics from the University of Alaska at Anchorage and a Bachelor of Science degree in surveying engineering from New Mexico State University. I'm also currently serving as the president of the National Society of Professional Surveyors, where we have approximately 17,000 members nationwide. I'm also a survey director at DUDEC. DUDEC is a 100% employee owned planning environmental and engineering consulting firm. We were founded in 1980 and have more than 700 employees in 16 offices nationwide. We have projects in all 50 states. Our mapping and surveying teams are strategically located across the country to mobilize quickly for jobs in any state. To start with, we're gonna go on over to YouTube for a worst case scenario back what would you do if you built a new home and found out you didn't get what you paid for then to fix the problem you're told to split the cost with the builder that's what one family says happened to them so they called abc4's jason Wynn to investigate their property line dispute take a look at mallory rogers and stephen carter's dream home the whole reason we purchased a larger home from where we came from is to have a yard for our child and our dogs and as it stands we haven't it's going to be put off. The family moved into the Saratoga Springs home last January, and they were given nine months to complete their yard or face a fine from their homeowners association. The family built a fence around their yard and split the cost with two of their neighbors. However, unlike some of their neighbors, the new homeowner's property has a berm. We were told by our foreman of our um, build uh, that the berms that they put in, the big dirt berms, were representative of our property lines and that under no circumstances should we be touching those berms. That is where our fences should go. They say this is the original stake used to mark the property. The family says they were a little surprised when a new surveyor showed up. Another surveyor came out to our property and um, different from the first surveyor, different company from what I understand, and resurveyed our property and we discovered the property lines were off. Yeah. Yeah, found property, I guess, is probably a, a good thing most of the time, but for us, not so good. The situation was not good for all four neighbors. 
Curbing, fencing, landscaping, sprinklers, oh, and those berms would all need to be moved. And like any new homeowner, they called their builder, who they say came back with the deal. When they came back to us and, and basically said, well, we're legally not responsible for this. We have no liability. We have no concerns here. We've been told by our legal teams, basically, you guys can shove it. Um, so we'll split these costs with you 50-50. It was just a, a huge kick in the gut where I was like, this, is, this isn't right, you know? So they reached out to ABC4 News, and I got involved and contacted the main builder, D.R. Horton, by email. Following up with the call the next day, I was told they only respond to media inquiries in writing. Two hours after I placed the calls, Mallory and Stephen got a call of their own. The foreman of our build um, called my husband's phone and left us a voicemail. He wasn't able to answer at the time and said, hey, we're so sorry. You know, we'd like to apologize for this. We're taking full responsibility and we're going to 100% cover the costs. Allowing them to finally complete their home and get their yard done and avoid a fine from their HOA. I'm absolutely glad we called you. I'm very, very happy. I'm very grateful. I think they did the right thing in what they said to us. I accept their apology. It's been nearly a month and I still haven't heard back from the company headquarters. I spoke with the family a little bit ago and they say they have bids into their contractor to get their yard fixed and they're waiting for that work to begin. Glenn? Back. Now that we've seen what can be one of the worst case scenarios if you don't utilize a professional land surveyor, let's discuss who exactly, exactly a professional land surveyor is. When you Google, what is a land surveyor, your search will return all kinds of definitions. I like the following description the best. The professional land surveyor is an accredited professional who conducts land surveys to measure and define real property and its boundaries. They are professional measurers who create and map boundary lines for land, air, and water spaces. Surveying facilitates construction, engineering, land evaluation, and the sale of real estate. Essentially, if it is on the face of the earth, land surveyors measure and map it. Becoming a professional land surveyor typically can be broken down into five steps. Remember that you should always check your state for their specific requirements as they change jurisdiction by jurisdiction. Number one, you must earn a bachelor's degree in land surveying, geomatics, or a closely related field. Standard courses include business, mathematics, humanities, geography, and science. Mathematics can go through calculus and beyond, and science, sciences will consist of advanced physics and chemistry. You must then take and pass the fundamentals of surveying exam, which is a computer-based 110 question exam administered by NCEES with a pass rate of 59% for first time and 37% for repeat takers. Next, you must obtain hands-on experience working for a licensed surveyor for four years. After gaining professional experience, the next step is to pass the principles and practice of surveying exam, which consists of 100 questions and has a pass rate of 70% for first time takers and 44% for repeat takers. The final step is to take the state-specific exam in your state of residence. The length of this exam varies state by state and is mandatory to practice land surveying in that state. Now that we know who professional land surveyors are, let's discuss in more detail the benefits of hiring a professional. The number one reason is that it is the law. Land surveyors protect the public. Land surveyors are licensed in the state or jurisdiction they're performing the work in and must adhere to strict educational, technical, and minimum training requirements. Adherence to these requirements ensures that their work meets the minimum standards for surveying in that state to protect the health, safety, and welfare of the public. That also means we have a professional obligation to do no harm. For example, just because a client hires me to survey their property, I cannot take more or alter boundary lines to fit their needs. 
we have an obligation to the public to ensure that all property rights are protected regardless of who our client is and how much they're paying us for our services. Professional land surveyors in most states are regulated by the same licensure board that licenses professional architects and professional engineers. Next, let's learn about the different types of land surveys. Your most typical form of land survey is a record of survey or boundary survey. Some states will have slightly different names, but the basic principles are the same. A boundary survey is a survey to locate the corners and boundary lines of a given parcel of land. This survey involves record and field research, measurements and computations to establish boundary lines in conformance with applicable state law. Easement lines are usually located with this type of survey as well. Construction layout surveys consist of measurements made before or during construction. If it is construction, a surveyor is likely involved to ensure that construction is explicitly completed off of the plans and layouts that engineers and architects created. This process controls the heights, horizontal layout, dimensions, and configuration for building construction of buildings, fences, and roadways. Failure to comply with local county and city ordinances can result in significant fines and fees until the site comes within compliance with these regulations and requirements. Mortgage location surveys, plot plans, or as-built surveys are performed to obtain horizontal and or vertical dimension data so that a constructed facility may be delineated and a foundation survey or as-built of the improvements surveyed and staked out. Specifically, an as-built survey physically locates structures and improvements on a parcel of land, generally for mortgage purposes. A topographic survey is a survey locating topographic features, both natural and man-made, such as buildings, improvements, fences, elevations, trees, streams, and contours of the land. If it exists on the land, it is measured and mapped during a topographic survey. A topographic survey may be required by a governmental agency or may be used by engineers and architects to design on-site improvements or development. ALTA NSPS surveys or extended title insurance coverage surveys are carried out to support a title company and lender with survey and location data that is necessary for issuing American Land Title Association and extended coverage title insurance. Essentially, this type of survey is usually conducted to provide financial protection to the developer when major infrastructure is being planned and built. These surveys have very specific requirements, which are depicted on Table A of the ALTA NSPS minimum standards detail requirements, including errors and omissions insurance to cover the costs and damages of infrastructure being built on other people's property and the costs associated with making those damages right. If you're interested in learning more about ALTA NSPS surveys, we presented a webinar on the current ALTA survey standards last year. So I can send you the presentation recording and a blog article on the topic. Let me know in the Q&A box if you want me to send you those materials. Subdivision plat or replat surveys are conducted when subdividing a tract of land into smaller parcels. This survey shows monumentation or boundary markers and survey data on a map in conformance with local ordinances and applicable state law. A replat involves moving a boundary between parcels of land or creating one large parcel from two or more smaller parcels. Next, what are the basic requirements to build a land survey? The main thing is to research, research, research. 
I cannot overstate this enough. Every good land survey is built primarily off of record information. A property's record information comes from the federal, state, and local government levels, along with research from public and private utility companies. The length of research varies dramatically project by project and can take anywhere from days to weeks to perform. Federal research is based on the original deeds of patent or where the property originated. Many deeds from the US government to the original patentee in Western states lands can be obtained from the Bureau of Land Management. Other sources include the state's Department of Natural Resources or DNR, which is sometimes a clearinghouse for land records. The state's Department of Transportation or DOT can provide any right-of-way information or roadway data. Surveyors also must utilize state, county, and city recordation offices to obtain the official deeds and plats of records. These patents, deeds, and utility and roadway easements are the key to building a successful survey. You take, you take a raw piece of land from its point of origin and learn what has happened to it throughout the years. The land could have been initially created from a patent from the United States government, followed by a home and roadway being built on it before being split into two parcels, with one half given to the original owner's son and the other to their daughter when they passed away. And then a large utility company could have run electric lines across the property to provide services to the area. Next, a natural gas line might have been entered, might have entered and been placed underground. The list of splits, easements and utilities being placed on the property can go on and on and increases the liability and associated costs if they're not correctly located and delineated physically on the ground or the official plat of survey. The surveyor is responsible for locating the legal documents that created any burdens on the property and then staking them out for the property owners or potential buyers and depicting them on official plats of survey. This step is a critical part of the land surveying process that you cannot get wrong, especially if there is a high pressure gas line and they are planning major construction across the property. An unknown gas line can cause catastrophic consequences if it's not located properly and stakeholders are not aware of its existence. So they can either plan to avoid or relocate it so the project can continue. You can avoid this risk by hiring a private underground utility locating company who have professional land surveyors in responsible charge. Underground mapping is a fascinating industry with sophisticated technological advances happening every year. As the need to know exactly what was placed underground increases with urban growth, this vital part of the land surveying industry has expanded exponentially. It is also worth noting that efforts to locate any unrecorded information must also be made. Inquiries to landowners for any plats they had prepared that may not have been recorded should be made. In the end, when a professional land surveyor can locate, map, and provide the data to all stakeholders, including property owners, potential buyers, investors, engineers, and architects, it's likely the project will progress smoothly. After all the research is completed and the field technicians have been briefed, it is time for the field work. The initial setup of geodetic control network is the primary key to establishing a solid foundation for your project. This takes time, skill, and the knowledge and direction of a professional land surveyor to ensure that UAV, our drone data collection, terrestrial scanning, aerial photography, ground penetrating radar, and all GPS groundwork proceed smoothly and ensure all these technologies are working together on the same reference systems. If you'd like more information on how to successfully integrate multiple survey data collection sources into a single survey deliverable, 
I'm hosting another webinar next week at the same time. Put it in the Q&A box if you're interested, and I'll send you the link to register for that session. Once the control network is established over the project site, then the fund mapping and surveying portion can begin. Now is the time to fly the drones, scan the buildings, and look for boundary monuments to tie down the subject parcel. When these elements are based on well-established control network, the project can move forward seamlessly. During the field work, surveyors and field technicians also note and measure the location of any existing features that could be a potential easement or burden to the property. Many parcels do not have official easements of record, but still may have existing power lines, trails, roadways, pipelines, and river frontage that could constitute unwritten rights to access and utilize the property. These features must be mapped and shown on the plot of survey to protect any unwritten, unrecorded rights of others. Not considering any and all evidence of potential easements and rights of access can result in lengthy court battles that could tie up the project and sale process for weeks, months, or even years. The final element of the survey process is developing and delivering official stamped and sealed plats of survey to the client. The stamp and signature of the professional land surveyor ensure that due diligence was paid and conveys who the responsible party in charge of the survey is. The professional surveyor takes great care and is diligent in protecting the client's interests and the public safety. The risks and liability of not hiring a professional land surveyor can be enormous. Building major infrastructure on another person's property can result in lengthy and expensive legal battles. Most professional surveyors carry errors and omissions insurance, which means that they will be liable should your project hit a major snag because of an issue like this. Properly determining the location of buildings and other property before any construction can also ensure you adhere to local codes and ordinances and setback or height restrictions. Landscaping is another costly aspect often not considered when you overlook boundary lines. Anytime that you assume the property runs along a fence line, tree line, or other feature, you risk making an expensive misstep. Placing fences, bushes, trees, or other landscaping within the bounds of your neighbor's property can be just as serious as placing a structure on someone else's land. Once the neighbor figures out that you are encroaching, any landscaping or structures you have built on or removed from their land can be very costly to remedy. All this said, I hope you see the real value of seeking professional land surveying services. Surveying is not easy, but it is vital in any land acquisition or construction project. DUDEC offers all the services I mentioned and has experienced land surveyors across North America and Hawaii. Our team specializes in ALTA, NSPS surveys, LIDAR topographic surveys, design level mapping, and web-based mapping solutions. The team has provided mapping surveyors services since 1980 and continues evolving to leverage new data collection mythologies and delivery systems. Thank you all for taking the time to listen in. I hope this presentation was useful and that you learned a bit more about the professional land surveying process. Do any of you have any questions for me at this time? Feel free to type your question in the Q&A box or click the raise hand button to be unmuted to speak. Thanks again for tuning in today. Check your email in the next day for a recording of this presentation and the slides, and don't hesitate to get in touch with me or Steve Hocart, DUDEX Mapping and Surveying Practice Director.
with any questions or concerns you may have.